Yo, what's up my tribe? Shadow of the Earth Tree is upon us and just in time I created a new character to do a whole Elden Ring playthrough and get ready for the DLC. And this sword and board strength build took me all the way from starting zones to beating the Elden Beast and will definitely work in the DLC. The majority of the items can be acquired pretty much early game so you can kick ass from the beginning. I'll go through the weapons, armor, items, and stats you need to know to demolish the entire game and surely will demolish the DLC. I will start doing more Elden Ring videos while playing the DLC so please give this video a like and subscribe to help the channel out so you don't miss any Elden Ring DLC content. It's so good to be back and thank you for clicking on the video. This build is all about breaking the stance of enemies and some bosses to do critical attacks, hence bigger damage. But there will be a small playstyle variation when fighting mobs versus bosses. There will be three ways to break the stance. That is your regular attacks, the Ash of War attacks, and the Guard counter attacks. When you're fighting mobs, your playstyle will be Sword and Boar, taking advantage of Guard counters or using the Ash of War to break their stance faster and do a critical attack. Heck, even the normal sword swings will break the enemy's stance. And with each critical attack, you will get some health back, reducing the amount of flasks you'll be using. Now, when you're fighting bosses, you will two-hand the sword and rely on regular attack combos and your Ash of War to break their stance if possible and do critical attack. Now, let's see how you can achieve this. It's pretty easy. First, the sword I'm using is the Sway Hander, and it's too freaking OP. It might be considered one of the best swords in the game with the huge reach, low requirements, fast swings, the low weight, high poise damage, and the best is that you can get it early game. If you love this sword, you won't need any other weapon to finish the game like I did on this playthrough. You can buy it from the isolated merchant in the west shack of the Whipping Peninsula with a cost of 3500 runes. A good substitution while you get it is the Claymore or the Long Sworn Greatsword, obtainable in Weeping Peninsula and Lindgrave. For this pure strength build, I'm using it with the heavy affinity to take advantage of the strength points, so you will need the Iron Wet Blade, located at Stonevale Castle in Lindgrave. The actual ward that I use with the Swayhander is no other than the OP Lion's Claw, that will make huge damage, poise damage, and increase the forward reach with that awesome jump attack. You can get it in Kaylid by defeating the Lion Guardian in Fort Gale. So as you can see, you can set up the Sway Hander with the Heavy Affinity and the Ash of Wolf pretty early on. And all you have to do is upgrading it while you progress in the game. So this is a Sword and Boar build and the shield that I'm using is no other than the Brass Shield. And once you go Brass, you won't go back. With its low requirement and obtainable early game, it's the best medium shield with its 100% physical damage reduction and it's perfect for your guard counter playstyle. You can farm it pretty much everywhere. There's a soldier using it like the gate from Ruins or outside Raya Lucario's Academy in Liurna of the Lakes. A good substitute while you get it is the Beast Crest Heater Shield that can be found inside a chest in a camp north Glimgrave before the small bridge with the pumpkin head enemy. The rest of the armaments are gonna be like always, a dagger with the golden bow Ash of War and any seal just to use flame granny strength buff incantation. The armor that I used for this build and this playthrough was the Carrion Knight set, comprised of helm, armor, gauntlets, and greaves, but switched the helm for the iconic Rain Wolf helm. Carrion Knight set can be found early game in Raya Lucaria Academy in Leorna on the Lake. The only issue with the set is that you won't get to the recommended 51 poise. Uh, but if you exchange a couple of points of strength or vigor into endurance, you can wear heavier pieces like the Great Helm and this Scale Greaves uh, to get to more than 51 points. The first talisman that I'm running with is the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman that while you progress the game, you can use the lesser versions to get that boost in physical damage negation. 
Next is the Great Jars Arsenal that will help a ton with increasing the equip load to be able to use the Sway Hander Colossal Sword as shield and still wear medium armor. While you progress the game, you can use the lesser version of it. Next is the Shard of Alexander that will increase the attack power of the Lion's Claw Ash of War. And since this is a talisman dropped when you finish Iron Fist Alexander questline in Farmazula, uh, while you progress the game, there's a few options you can use, like Carrion Filigree Crest to lower the FPUs of Lion's Claw Ash of War, the Claw Talisman if you incorporate jump attacks into your playstyle, the Curved Sword Talisman to increase the damage of guard counters by 20%, or the Green Turtle Talisman to increase its stamina recovery speed. And the last talisman is the one I call the Wild Card because it will depend uh, if you're fighting mobs or bosses or if you are in a special circumstance. For mobs and bosses that their stands can be broken, you want to use the Assassin's Crimson Dagger Talisman to restore more than 10% of your life after doing a critical attack. If you're fighting against a boss or you are two-handed in the Sway Hander, you can change it to the Green Turtle Talisman to increase the stamina recovery speed or the Wing Sword Insignia to have an attack boost while you do successive attacks or any of the element defense talismans against Holy, Magic, Fire or Light. The two tiers I use for the Physique Flask on this build are the Green Burst Crystal tier that increases stamina recovery speed by 15 per second for 3 minutes and the Strength Knot Crystal tier to increase strength by 10 for 3 minutes. You want to use the Physique Flask before a boss fight or a challenging enemy. For Incantation, it's very simple. I use uh, the good old Flame Grammy Strength and the always reliable Flame Cleanse Me to get rid of Scarlet Rot and Poison Buildup. If you don't have Flame Cleanse Me, you can use Cure Poison to only cure Poison Buildup. For this new level 120 character, I decided to go with the Wretch class to play it on the DLC. But to play this pure strength base build, I recommend going with a hero that has great vigor and strength. And you'll need like two points in dexterity to meet the dexterity requirements of the Sway Hander. But you can also choose a Vagabond, but it has 13 dexterity, so you will waste 2 dexterity points because you only need 11. So the attributes of this build are Vigor at 60, Mine at 12, Endurance at 21, Strength at 60, Dexterity at 11, Intelligence at 10, no points here ever, Faith at 15 to cast Flame Ground Strength, Arcane at 15, no points here ever. So there you have it guys, this is the build that I use for this first playthrough of my new character level 120 that I prepared to play on the DLC instead of using the level 200 character I've been using in the past. So with this build, uh, you will surely kick ass in the Elden Ring game and in the DLC as well. So again, thank you for taking your time and watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider punch that like button to help the channel out. And if you have not done it, please subscribe to not miss future videos while we all play Shadow of the Earth Tree. I know it's going to be epic. So get ready for the DLC, be safe, and see you on the next one. Ciao!